What a shame. Boeing and NASA once again humiliated themselves before the space community. Boeing Starliner's historic first crewed flight test actually scrubbed on May 6. No surprise. The public and even two NASA astronauts, Barry Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, can be temporarily relieved. Meanwhile, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk has a chance to poo-poo those who made laugh at him and his Dragon spacecraft 10 years ago. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. The reason for the cancellation of Starliner's first astronaut launch is a problem with an oxygen relief valve on the Centaur stage on the Atlas V. Atlas V, the flight's rocket manufactured by United Launch Alliance, has flown missions since 2002 with a 100% success rate. But this is its first mission with astronauts. The next possible launch attempt is at least four more days or May 10. The delay symphony on Starliner seems to show no signs of stopping. On the same day, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk posted a humorous tweet. Although Boeing got $4.2 billion to develop an astronaut capsule and SpaceX only got $2.6 billion, SpaceX finished four years sooner. Note, the crew capsule design of Dragon 2 has almost nothing in common with Dragon 1. Too many non-technical managers at Boeing. Back in 2014, the United States held its own little internal space race. NASA chose two companies to bring us back to the International Space Station, providing them with funding to build a crewed space vehicle, one established long-proven aerospace engineering firm, and one upstart run by a guy who names all his kids like their Warhammer figure. Ten years later, the race has a clear loser, Boeing. This legacy company walked away with nearly two-thirds of the money to build its Starliner system, far more than the $2.6 billion allowance SpaceX got for its Dragon. By then, there was the widespread presumption that it would easily beat SpaceX to the space station. Ironically, instead of being an easy favorite option for national interest, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft becomes a gold digger. Over $4.2 billion of taxpayer money was spent to develop a spacecraft that has not been reused, even though it is advertised as a reusable vehicle. The word reused in this case refers to a vehicle that manages to launch, land, refurbish, and launch again. Of the two test flights it made, only one was considered a success. CST-100 has also not yet benefited NASA anything according to the awarded contract. Even the rocket carrying it, ULA's Atlas V, falls into the ocean after each launch just like a 60s rocket. No reuse at all. More importantly, the spacecraft flies on a booster using Russian-made rocket engines they can't get anymore. They can fly it exactly six times before they run out of boosters. There are too many political motives here and we, the diligent taxpayers, have almost no control over where our money goes. So the world doesn't need another capsule. What matters is fully reusable rockets and spacecraft. This is Elon's sharp response to Boeing's blind advocates who use the reason as needing many commercial suppliers to deny serious errors caused by the CST-100. So what went wrong here? The first one is about the cultural gap between two firms. SpaceX has put it into a highly risky environment since its early days. The several major projects that it was deep into meant more money but a lot more work. Boeing's space division, by contrast, lived in its comfort zone. It had never won a large fixed price contract. Thanks to the profile of decades of spaceflight experience, it's easy for Boeing to bill the government for all of its expenses and earn a fee. Obviously, NASA then has to pay for all of the cost overruns and delays. But now everything has changed. Boeing had to deliver a flyable spacecraft for a firm fixed price. Thus, every penny spent on Starliner meant one less penny in profit. To avoid the greater loss, they came up with a more terrible decision, allocating fewer resources to Starliner than it needed to thrive. Secondly, the weak organization is a big deal. Boeing spread out the responsibility related to software for two teams at two separate locations, Kennedy Space Center in Florida for the ground system software and Boeing's facilities in Houston near Johnson Space Center for the flight software. Unfortunately, neither of them trusted each other. They mostly operated separately, not really sharing work with each other. The lack of smooth coordination between the two software teams finally ended up in software problems in the uncrewed flight test Boeing orbital flight test in December 2019. Um, we did not get the orbital insertion burn that we were hoping for. It uh, appears as though the mission elapsed timing system um, had an error in it. John Mulholland, 
a vice president who managed the company's commercial crew program, also admitted that the company did not run integrated end-to-end -end tests for the whole mission. He also insisted that it was not due to the cost matter. It was definitely not a matter of cost, Mulholland said at the time. Cost has never been in any way a key factor in how we need to test and verify our systems. If Boeing met trouble with internal communication, its working relationship with its partner, especially Aerojet Rocketdyne, would not be brighter. The company selected industry leader Aerojet Rocketdyne for Starliner's various thrusters, despite Rocketdyne having its own myriad subcontractors. This contributes to making the process more complicated, time, and cost-consuming because of the relevance of a dozen different people in different departments at different companies. What's the result? Nothing good. Starliner still hits troubles and a series of delays. SpaceX remains loyal to its vertical integration method, developing and building one's own technology, which is faster, cheaper, and much more efficient. So, it's time to scrub the loser to make room for the best of the best candidates. SpaceX Dragon is now the only reusable orbital cargo spacecraft in operation. In 2021, faced with the delay of CST-100, NASA extended its deal with the company to cover five additional missions. The newly contracted launches extend their partnership through 2030 and bring the total contract value to nearly $5 billion for 14 fully operational astronaut missions. Although got less money than Starliner initially, in the end, SpaceX could over Boeing by flying 14 times for NASA, earning a tidy fee each time, compared to just six for Starliner. Meanwhile, Boeing has lost $1.5 billion in charges due to delays and overruns with its spacecraft development. In 2020, Dragon first carried people to the space station and for four years, 13 operational public and private missions have been flown to orbit. The reputation, safety, and reliability are off the table for Dragon. Taking responsibility for carrying the spacecraft, the partly reusable Falcon 9 rocket is no less notable. As of April 2024, SpaceX marked the 300th successful recovery on land or at sea of Falcon 9 boosters or Falcon Heavy side boosters, an impressive tally that has now seen hardware alight 233 times on drone ships in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean since April 2016 and 67 times on solid ground at Cape Canaveral or Vandenberg Space Force Base, Kayla, since December 2015. That launch also marked the 10th Falcon 9 to take flight so far in April, achieving a cadence of a flight every 2.3 days and positioning SpaceX well on track for its off-stated goal of up to 144 missions by the end of the year. Elon Musk's space company has been developing and testing its next-generation rocket called Starship. This fully reusable rocket is the largest and most powerful rocket ever built, experienced three flight tests, and is towards its flight four, likely at the end of May. The common in all of SpaceX's vehicles is their reusability, which offers the benefit of cost, turnaround time, and even technical improvement. Honestly, Rocket's reusability has led to a major and often overlooked SpaceX benefit. It's an incredible advantage in reliability to get your hardware back and learn stuff you didn't expect. Companies that don't recover their rockets have issues they don't know about. That someday will bite them. It explains why SpaceX can enhance the reliability of its products through each mission and upgrade them to a higher level. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.